If that's all that's in your mind when you're on the phone call, you've already lost these relationships, you guys. So the big question is, what are top agents doing to absolutely crush it in real estate, grow their teams and add more transactions year over year while so many struggle? To get the answers, we interview the top real estate agents to learn their secrets to success. My name is Andrew Dunn. And my name is Peter Michael. Welcome to Lead Agent Secrets. So with that being said, I want to roll us into your third and final topic. Sure. which is making FSBOs your friend. So yeah. one part of that's your third secret to success. Yeah, I, I love I love four saw my owners. I mean, they've been... I so said you're making us your friend. I can't imagine FSBOs. So Yeah, yeah. I, I um, you know, I, as a, like a cynical, deep thinker, do-it-yourselfer kind of person, right, my whole life, like I, I actually genuinely... Step one is you're not going to make anyone a friend if you don't actually genuinely love them. So like for people that are for people that are listening to like, Oh, I want to, I want to make these people my friends so that I can list their houses. Well, of course that's your business intention. But if that's, if that's all that's in your mind when you're on the phone call, you've already lost these relationships. You guys, like you're talking about for some, for a lot of our first self owners, they are our most competent, most educated clients, right? Like these are the, the people with the highest bullshit meters, that have perhaps some of the some of the wor- biggest owies in sales experiences, right? Where they've been the victims of manipulation and and a lot of bullshit, frankly, in our industry. And so I feel protective of that. I feel protective of the real estate industry. You know, I I, I personally get to work with a lot of really true professionals in real estate that are badasses, and we all get to work with a bunch of people that are not that, right? And and. So when I call a four sale by owner, I, I see myself as an ambassador of the industry, but I also try to have as much fun as possible. I'm expecting the boxing gloves. So I invite the first hits, right? That's the step one. So how do I make friends with Fizbos? I know that when I get on the phone with a four sale by owner, they're, the moment they find out I'm an agent, then the swings are going to start coming, right? So I'm going to put my gloves down and lean into that and just take, I, 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 I'm going to let them get their catharsis out of all of their alleys, right? Yeah. So step one, hey, I'm calling, by the way, I'm full disclosure, I am a real estate agent. Are you getting a bunch of calls from agents right now? Yeah. Or, oh, man. What a pain. Is, that, is it annoying? Yeah. Are you, I, I have to work with them every day. So I get it. Is it, how's it going? Are they being annoying? How are they treating you? Like, are, are you dealing with people with integrity or is it super cheesy? Like I'm just getting on their side. And I like, was just thinking if that was me, you're just throwing all of us under the bus. I love it. I, I, yeah, would, I, have gone, I would have oh, gone. Like, and sometimes, sometimes like, no, actually they're being great. Like they're, I'm like, okay, thank God. You know, it's embarrassing sometimes the things that I have to deal with in my industry. There's some great agents out there, but you know how it is. A few bad apples spoil the mix, right? So I'm never going to bad mouth another agent, but I'm going to acknowledge the mixed bag that our industry is. And yeah. not, undoubtedly, I'm just going to acknowledge reality, right? Is that that mixed bag is likely showing up at their doorstep. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I, would, I would have gone, do you want this to be the last call you ever get from a realtor? And they'll go, yeah. And then I go, sweet. So let's list your property and let's get this shit done, son. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's it. And, and, and frankly, that's a close that, that I do use, right? Like, <laughs> but... Great minds think alike. But I don't need that. But I don't need with that, right? Because I know that if they've got swings to take, they need to get those out first, right? Otherwise, everything everything that I say, they're going to be combative against. Yeah. So, like, being willing to just, like, remove Tim from the equation and realize this is not about me, right? This is an individual person. I'm just, like, showing up in their world. They don't know me. Like, I can be – I can actually be completely impervious to – any of the, any of the insults they want to swing or the, or the disdain that they have. And then just being super creative, right? So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take the swings. I'm going to ask, ask the hard questions. And then I'm going to be creative in, in hearing their story. Like what, what is actually motivating them? Sure. They want to net more money, but honestly, a lot of times I think for sale owners are emotionally, they're emotionally invested into their property or the outcome, right? Like they've, they've built a house or they've, They've, they feel like they can sell it better than anyone else. And, and maybe that, maybe they're right. Like certainly they know more about it than anyone else. And so really trying to dive into hearing that story, reiterating it to them. Right. So what have you done? And not just complimenting on the house, but like, but 
like really figuring out what that place has meant to them and then showing them that when they, when they do walk or when they do a roll around that maybe the, their approach is not the best one or sure you can get offers in the seller's market, but can you get multiple? Are you leaving money on the table, helping them explore possibilities and coming as like a friend and a consultant and letting go of the need to take the listing, right? Like, Hey, I, I'm actually, I'm just going to connect with you uh, talking to you as another professional human being in, in, in the industry, another human that's, that's, got a got a, a property to sell and a place to go and stresses and, and life happening. And um and so I like I like to uh I like to also like I'll just give a few scripts just sort of for some tangibles, right? First of owner says says uh you know hey I don't I don't I don't want to list I don't want to list my house. And I'm like perfect I don't know if I want to list your house either. I, I actually in fact Look, to be clear, I will not be willing to take your listing until I am able to arrive at a full understanding of what your goals are, why you're selling, when you need to sell by, what you're financially up against, and what you're doing now to sell versus what I would do. And let, until I have a full picture of what you're doing, Mr. Seller or Mrs. Seller, I'm not actually willing to put myself on the line to say that I can do, I can dramatically bring value that's going to be worth the commission you're going to spend until I know what you need. So if that's a conversation you want to explore, then I would actually need to set up time in my schedule to do an appointment to actually fully vet that out. And at the point at which I have a clear understanding of your goals and a belief that I truly am the person to help you get where you want to go. And I could do that better than you could on your own. At which point I would, I would then consider taking your listing, but not until then. And it, Puts them automatically on the- sets you apart, right? Because everybody's like, "Oh, give me your listing, give me your listing." Exactly. And you're and like, like no, "Well, you don't understand." Like, I actually don't know if I want your listing. Yeah, you understand. I actually hand my clients now, right? Like, I, I really do. I mean, I'm I'm closing a quarter of the deals that I used to because I'm I'm truly like I'm I'm doing business where I feel passion and desire, right? Some, frankly, some physicals I don't want. <laughs> That's the reality. Yeah. So. <clears throat> When it when it comes to, I was thinking about that script where it's like, you're just putting yourself in a position of power, right? Mm-hmm. Like I'm sorry, just listing and I'm like, because I've again done similar things, different scenarios as well, where again, this is just coming from such a place of abundance that people maybe don't conceptualize. Like the reason that you can come from this place and in the nicest way possible is because you don't care. Like it, like that's like a very blunt way to put it, but it's like irrespective of this person lives with me, it doesn't matter to me. Like mm-hmm. I'm willing to help him. I want to do this, but it's also like, I want to help them, but it's also got to be on my terms because yeah. you're not fighting for the last nickel. You don't, you've got bread, money, milk, right? Yeah. Like you're good. And now it's like, I like you touch on. It's like, I want to do business that I want to do. And like, <laughs> you've just come full circle now where I think, you know, to kind of come full circle on the whole episode here. It's like, you're just now in a position where you are enjoying life and you're just doing what the fuck you want to do, whether that's surfing, hanging out with your kids, doing business with the people that are decent, doing the parts of the business that you enjoy. And then Uh everything else is now diminished to the point where, Hey, I was doing 150 deals a year and I was fucking miserable. Yeah. So like you also don't feel any, outside kind of pressure or urgency to grow again because you're like, listen, I'd rather make this. I know these aren't the actual numbers, but it's like, I'd rather make a hundred K a year than a million a year and be fucking happy. Yeah. That's kind of from, I I guess that's my biggest takeaway is that it's like, I'm just in such a position now where I've really figured out what I want out of my life. And it's not that that's where I'm at. Yeah. Arrival. Sure. That's, that's a, that's a, um, a window into a part of the journey, you know, just arrival and hustle looks different for me now. Right. Like, uh, honestly, I'm, gr- I'm my, my hustle and my effort and my growth has just transferred over into things like making art or gardening or like things that, that don't necessarily have the same intrinsic values, lower dollar per hour value activities. Yeah. Quite frankly, that have a higher intrinsic value to me. Um, whereas before I was playing the game of, 
how do I can constantly level up my dollar per hour value, right? By outsourcing parts of the business that are lower dollar per hour values and keeping myself focused on taking listings and outsourcing everything else. And I'm like, well, I can, I can do that still. And I will, but, um, yeah, I, there's other things that I love. And, and you I think do. at the end, I also feel passion around liberating people from being ruled by money because I think it's a, I think it's a lousy master, right? It's like, I see my dollar, every dollar in my life is a soldier that works for me. You know, I send it out every day to go and bring back more, but it's never, it's never going to be, it's never going to be a general that I work for. You know, I don't work for money. So, so have you, have you also shifted in how you financially secure your future? Meaning like investing, are you doing like fix and flips or you do have money like in the market, that kind of stuff? Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I always, I'm always, I'm in real estate, right? So I'm always looking at, always looking at deals, always making offers. If there's something that catches my fancy, but even that has changed, right? Like I used to do a bunch of like uninspiring fix and flips. And now like I, I develop property that, uh, that's riskier and may or may not have the same return, but I'm doing unique developments that I think are adding real value to the community. Um, and so, you know, I have to diversify, obviously, you know, my bread and butter is still going to be selling homes and coaching, calling, coaching clients. And, um, and so I'm, I'm still vetting, vetting some of that out, but like right now I'm, I'm in this like old mint entry, modern 1970s home on 26 acres that I'm developing currently. And, um, and that's more exploring, not just like building rentals, but like thinking about how do I facilitate this sustainable community, um, inside developments that I do. So that's a, yeah, that's one of the other businesses, perhaps another call for another time. For, for another time. Think, yeah. That's a big talk. <laughs> if we're diving into that business, that's a whole, uh, that's a whole nother call. I was going to say, with that being said, I want to give you the floor now. Um, yeah. So if people want to reach out, whether you're buying or selling a home, whether you're growing your team or, you know, with your coaching and whatever else you've got going on, how could people reach out? Whether it's phone, email, website, social media, tell the people how they could reach out. Yeah, I'm old school. Send me a text or a call, 541-250-1065. Um, I've got the socials out there. I think my Instagram is wrist underscore Tim. Uh, my brokerage is Discover Oregon Real Estate. And so if people want to pop on there, it's a statewide referral network. And my focus is as far as like referrals I take, I'm mostly doing luxury homes and commercial real estate is my personal focus. That's my that's my main book of clients, but I've got great residential partners across the whole state. So if someone's like, Hey, I've got something happening in Oregon, a listing, a buyer, an investor, want to move, want to explore. Uh, I cover the whole state. Perfect. And then last three questions, super quick fire straight off the top. First one, what's your favorite book or person you're learning from right now? Okay. Uh, favorite book or person, uh, Debbie to grow from forward coaching. She's who coaches me. I love her. Love that organization. That's my favorite person I'm learning from right now. For sure. What's your goal in the next 12 months to love my life. <laughs> and therefore what's the biggest obstacle you see from stopping you hitting that goal? Uh, my misman- yeah, e- mismanaged ego. Love it. Tim, thank you for coming on the show. Everyone, we hope you've enjoyed listening and we will see you in the next one. Oh, and by the way, if you're listening to this and you aren't making over $100,000 per year in GCI and you're looking for a predictable system to get you there, then head over to go.eliteagentsecrets.com.